Hello and welcome to Veggie Magnifique, your go-to for holistic wellness and a healthy vegan lifestyle as well as vegan momming. I'm Anne, health coach and performer, and today I am so excited because we have registered dietitian Carla Moreno Bryce with us today, and we are going to be talking about everything vegan baby nutrition, baby led weaning, and answering all these questions that we have as parents of little babies. So welcome to Veggie Magnifique, Carla. Hi, thank you, Anne, and I'm so excited to to be here on your channel and honored um, that you have invited me. I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Thank you. Me too. I'm thrilled. And the thing is, you know, I found Carla as a mom of a young baby. He was around six, seven months, and I was like, hmm, I should really, you know, figure out what to feed my baby. And so I'm just, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to have you on Veggie Magnifique, and I know that the information that you're going to share will be helpful to other parents who are looking for help navigating this new thing. Let's get into how to feed our babies. <laughs> but First off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a registered dietitian and specializing in vegan nutrition and just give us a little bit of a backstory here. Of course. Yes. And well, as you mentioned, I am a vegan registered dietitian and I'm all myself. I have uh, two girls, a four-year-old and a three-month-old, and it's it's been exciting uh, to now uh, be able to share this lifestyle with my with my family. And how I became a registered dietitian is actually <laughs> a little different than most people navigate this journey. I was studying pre med in college, and then I decided to take an elective course in nutrition, and I was hooked. But it wasn't until my daughter was born that I started really to get interested into pediatrics and nutrition for children in general. Then I decided to just start sharing the meals that I was making for my daughter when she started solids. And what I realized was that one, there was just a lack of information for parents who were going through a similar journey in terms of raising their kids vegan and starting solids using the baby led weaning approach. But I also was using my platform on social media to not only be a resource for parents, but also bring more awareness about a vegan diet for kids. And so, you know, in a nutshell, that's how my journey began. So let's talk about baby led weaning because maybe some viewers don't know what it is. So let's just do a little bit of like definition here. What is baby led weaning and how does it differ from normal or normal, but like purees, for example, for baby? So as you know, baby led weaning is something that I really, really love and it's Something that I tell every other parent that I meet that it's one of my favorite feeding stages for kids. And so before I share about the reasons that I love about it, um, I do want to say what baby led weaning is. And for an infant, it's essentially to feed themselves by skipping the more traditional spoon feeding approach. And I chose to start baby led weaning with my oldest daughter because baby led weaning is just it's much more than just skipping purees. It's more than just promoting self-feeding. It has benefits for the infant and for the family as well. Benefits like an infant learning about textures and about flavors, which will help the infant be more adventurous eaters later on in life. They are learning how to tune into their fullness. And then for the family, it means that everyone gets to have the same meal. So it means less work in having to prepare different meals for everyone in the family and everyone gets to have the same thing. So it has benefits for the child, for the baby, but as well as the family. I have one question about that actually, because I have been doing a little bit of like two meal preparation because of like salt. And I'm wondering, could you maybe shed some light on the salt question? Because like my son just turned one, but I know it's something that you want to avoid. And so I've been like setting aside his and then not that I heavily salt my food either, but I would love, I would love your you know advice about that. Yeah, great question. And yes, we do want to limit um, salt content for kids up until the age of two or three years old. That's not to say that salt is quote unquote bad for them. Like they can still have salt. There's other foods, primarily 
pre-made or packaged foods that already contain salt. And those are fine to provide. The one thing I do suggest to parents is just to be mindful about how much salt containing food is provided to baby during those earlier ages. And so kind of what you said about taking some food for baby and setting it aside and then the parents or the adults themselves salt to their taste at the end of preparation. And so that's kind of the way that I did it, where I would prepare a meal, modify it to uh, my daughter's appropriate texture, set it aside, and then I would salt mine, or I would wait to salt until I actually sit down to eat. Right, right. Yeah, that's what that's what we've been doing. And I just wonder about flavor. Like, for example, I've been using lots of herbs and spices. From what I understand, that's okay. Is that your opinion, you know, in terms of putting a little bit of like oregano or spices or just any type of like, obviously, not I'm not putting a bunch of cayenne or something, but like normal spices. Oh, absolutely. If you can introduce flavors with different spices or other seasonings, that is beneficial for the baby because not only do they get to learn about these flavors, but you know, they also get to learn about a family's food preference or their own family cuisine. And so it's great to introduce these as early as you can. You don't necessarily have to offer bland foods to baby. So just really quickly, if you are a new mom or a mom that's been around the block, I have created an ebook that I'm so excited to share with you. And it is called Optimum Mama Wellness, 12 Keys to More Energy, Enjoyment, and Wholeness. And it is a free ebook, so you can download it below the video. I really hope that you find all the tips helpful. I've been working on this for a while and, and I just, I'm so excited about it. So I hope that you love it and definitely let me know if you do. It's free, just click the link below. There are some that believe that what you eat when baby is in the womb affects like their taste buds. I don't know how you feel about that, but I certainly tried to vary my diet when, when I was pregnant. Do you think that that plays a role in what they like? It certainly does. You know, I haven't really looked into specific research with that, but it does affect a baby's palate and it helps them introduce to, you know, the flavors again, like I said, to, to the family's preference. And so if you're introducing these different seasonings or flavors to baby when they're in the womb or even while they're breastfeeding, those are all great times to introduce baby to these flavors. That's so good to know, right? All my kale smoothies paid off, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, but let's talk about sequence, right? Because I think another big question in parents' minds is when do we introduce certain foods and in what order? So I'd love to kind of demystify that a little bit. Yes. Yeah, so there is the belief that you do have to start with just one food or a certain plant food for baby. And there really is no rule for a sequence. You can really start with any food of your choice as long as that plant food is the appropriate size, the appropriate texture for baby to eat. The only sequence to follow really lies in the texture firmness. So for a baby who is just starting solids, something that is really soft, almost like the way I try to describe it is if you put place that food in between your, your fingers and you just smush it. If it smushes really easily, that means it's safe and so soft enough for baby. So something that is not too dry or crunchy is the best and safest form of texture for them. And what about cooked versus raw? Like, obviously, I've heard a lot about having cooked vegetables, but then, you know, raw fruits. Is that is that correct in the beginning? <sighs> Yes, but again, it depends on the texture of that raw fruit. So you wouldn't be offering like, you know, a raw wet wedge of apple versus what's another fruit? Like? A blackberry, for example. A blackberry. Yes, there you go. <laughs> and yeah. so if you want to offer a raw apple, I would suggest maybe shredding it like you would shred a carrot. As long as baby can, can grab it, usually around nine months is when they can use their pincer grip. So that would be a good time to offer it raw in a shredded form. Or the easiest way would probably be to poach or steam that apple if you wanted to, to offer it. 
Okay, great. So it, it's pretty open what you offer. You just have to cater it to make sure that it's safe for baby. That's that's good. So what about greens, for example? Do you suggest that you steam them? And like, it's true that I've had a hard time figuring out how to give my son greens. Like we give it to him in smoothies, but like it, it's not very fun to pick up a little limp steamed kale thing. So what do you recommend for greens? Yeah, great. Um, yes, it wouldn't be fun to pick it up, but it does offer benefits to, to your son or to a baby who's offered um, leafy greens in that way because they're actually, you know, using their hands. And so they're feeling the texture and they're getting used to, to feeling that. And that brings a lot of benefits down the line in their childhood where they won't have many food aversions because they've already been exposed to these textures. But one way that you can offer it is really to almost like julienne the cooked leafy greens, whether that's spinach or kale. If you want to offer more of a raw leafy green, romaine lettuce by offering it uh, like the, the heart of the romaine the lettuce. spears. Yeah, the crunchy part. Yeah. That you can offer, but I would wait until they're more of an advanced eater. Um, you know, during the first year, that might be a little tough for them to manage and to be able to chew. So the best bet would be to steam or or cook the, the leafy greens and then um, cutting it into small pieces. Or one way that I used to do it is to use frozen leafy greens, the chopped frozen leafy greens, and then cook it along with the meal. And that was probably the primarily choice of mine to offer it to my daughter. That's actually how we hide greens, like hide, but also eat greens ourselves. My husband and I, it's like one of our little games is we chop them up really finely and we just chuck them in everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, just really nilly. You know, if I'm making like a vegan mac and cheese, you know, like with cashew or whatever, like I chuck in at the end you know some chopped up kale or like I really just just to make sure we're getting enough I try to throw it in a lot of things so that's a great idea for baby as well to just kind of sneak it in not sneak it because it's not like it's hidden but it's just small right it's part of the recipe is how I usually tell others <laughs> exactly that totally makes sense I just want to address one question that I think a lot of parents have to go back to the baby led weaning thing is mm -hmm. I think a lot of parents are afraid of their child choking with like them feeding themselves so can you shed some light on that oh yes this is an area of baby led weaning where many parents feel nervous about it and rightly so we want to make sure that baby is safe when starting solids but choking and gagging are two different things if if a baby is gagging, that is actually a good thing. <laughs> I know for us parents, it, it doesn't always feel that way, but it is a good thing. It means that baby is using um, their safety mechanism. And I know it's so hard to see baby having some difficulty with their food, but the best thing you can do in that situation is simply to let baby work through it on their own. You never want to try and reach for that food with your fingers because then that can push the food further back and risk getting it lodged. So your baby may cough or sometimes they may even vomit that food and that's all normal and perfectly okay. Choking on the other hand is silent and that's because a piece of food has been partially or completely lodge in a baby's airway. So you'll notice that baby may make a high pitch sound or they may make no sound at all. And if this is the case, we do have to intervene immediately by performing CPR. And I actually encourage parents to consider taking a hands-on CPR class when their baby is starting solids to feel prepared if and when that time comes. It's something you never want to use, but at least you'll feel prepared. But yes, choking can feel a little bit nervous when you're starting this journey. And the way that I really tell parents to bring a little bit of comfort is as long as a food that is offered is safe in texture and the appropriate size for them, and the baby is supervised, then things will, things will work out okay. Yeah, it's true that, you know, we are raising humans with all these reflexes and natural, like, mechanisms. And I, I try to remind myself that, you know, because <laughs> it's like nerve wracking, like there's a whole new fear that appears in your life when you become a parent. It's crazy. Oh, yes. So <laughs> yeah. um, 
And just really quickly as well, in terms of spoon feeding, is there any downside versus baby bedding? Yeah, great question. So for me, you know, just from my experience in professional work with working with parents starting solids, there really isn't a downside to spoon feeding when done correctly. And so a family can choose to spoon feed at the beginning if that's their choice and if that feels most comfortable to them. The most important thing when doing so is making sure that you as a parent follow the signs of baby's interest in food and fullness. So if baby begins to close their mouth or look to the side when a spoonful is presented, then that's a sign that maybe baby may be getting full and no longer desires to eat. And if that's the case, I encourage parents to really respect that, to respect a baby's appetite, even if it feels like they didn't eat enough. <laughs> Sometimes we feel that way, but babies know their bodies best and can communicate to us when they no longer desire food. Yeah, definitely. And I love that you brought up the word respect. That's been one thing that I've really kept in mind in becoming a parent this past year is this idea of respecting my child and respecting where he is and his pace and his timing. And this is an intelligent human here. And I have been looking a lot into different parenting philosophies and RIE parenting, this RIE parenting is all about like respecting the child as it is a human. And I found it very inspiring. So I'm really glad that you brought that up because it's true. Like I think yesteryear, you know, when baby was like, "Mm hmm. It's like you're being difficult. It's like, well, maybe they're full. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's good that you have awareness of it because sometimes we as parents forget to look at our baby as their own self. They're their own little person. And so this idea of respecting them is really something that we can start, you know, early on. Yeah. And it's not that you're not being a good parent, au contraire, you know, by respecting this person. They learn respect as well. You know, I think, I think it's a beautiful Beautiful word for it. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about examples of balanced meals for babies. So when it comes to feeding babies, one of the things that I always encourage parents to focus on when they're preparing meals is to focus on calories first. And this is the primary nutrient for a baby's development. We want to make sure that we offer adequate energy for them because without sufficient calories from nutrient dense foods, a baby on a vegan diet uh, may not thrive. So as far as a balanced meal for a vegan baby, they should always include an iron rich source. And the highest sources of iron are going to be your legumes. So your beans, your lentils, tofu, and there are some grains like farro as an example that can provide some iron, but your legumes are going to be your richest sources. So focus on an iron source and then include a fruit or a vegetable and something that provides some sort of fat or even high nutrient dense food. So that could be even drizzling a little bit of olive oil on their food, or if you want to go more of the whole food route, some avocado or even sweet potatoes to offer some of those calories too. So I focus on iron, a fruit or a vegetable, and then something that provides uh, fat or calories. And really you can offer an abundance of meals to your baby when you just focus on those fundamentals. It's true that I've I've had fun thinking about the composition of my son's meals. And, and it's true that's actually affected a little bit of my cooking for my husband and myself as well. It's like, I mean, I think about nutrition all the time. It's like my shtick, <laughs> but like at the same time, feeding my son makes me think, okay, what is it that I'm not giving him and that we're eating? And why am I not giving it to him? Is it because it's salty? Is it because it's like a packaged thing? You know, like sometimes we'll have like tofurkey or something. And, I, you know, I'd rather give him tofu than tofurkey. And it's just kind of upped my awareness, I think, which has been great. That's really good. And, you know, for many families too, when they have a baby to nourish and that really changes the course for their lifestyle, really. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally interesting. Parenting is such an adventure. <laughs> One thing I'd really love to discuss with you really quickly is if there are moms and dads out there that are wondering like, should I, is it safe, you know, to raise a vegan baby, a, a, a vegan child? Like, you know, let's, let's maybe demystify this. And, you know, can I, you assure our, our viewers out there? Yes. So that is a, a big concern for many, um, you know, not necessarily for those who are wanting to raise their kids vegan, but also for those on the outside who question, you know, the validity of this diet. And 
the truth is, and you know, I'm not just saying this because I'm vegan myself or because I'm raising my daughter's vegan, but the research really shows that when a diet is appropriately planned and supplemented appropriately, a child from zero, you know, years of age through their adulthood can thrive on a vegan diet. And so the key really is to be mindful and aware of what key nutrients they are to have on their diet. And for those who follow a vegan diet for kids, this is iron, iodine, zinc, calcium, vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin B12. And so kids can obtain those nutrients from plant foods alone. There are just a few of those nutrients that naturally lack on a plant-based diet. And so those will have to be supplemented. Those nutrients that have to be uh, supplemented would be vitamin B12, vitamin D, and iodine. And so vitamin D, that begins um, soon after a baby is born through if an infant is exclusively breastfed, vitamin D naturally lacks in breast milk. And so that should be supplemented. For those who are offered infant formula, then they'll obtain that nutrient through the infant formula. And then vitamin B12 should begin at the time they start solids, preferably. And then iodine really is until they are weaned from either breast milk or infant formula. So those are the sort of the three key nutrients um, for those under the age of one. And one last question I have for you is about the introduction of water. Mm. Yes. So water is not necessary during the first year of life. <laughs> A baby's form of liquid should only be from breast milk and or infant formula. You can offer about one ounce of water to introduce for them to practice drinking from an open cup. But other than that, water is not necessary during that first year. Great. I was, I was curious about that myself. So last question, I know we don't have much time, but do you have any advice for mamas out there, papas out there about that baby solid starting period? <laughs> yes. So if you are ready to begin solids with your baby, ensure that they are ready to actually eat solids. So knowing the signs of readiness, which is baby can sit up by themselves and they have good head control. Those are all signs that baby is ready to begin solids. And the other way of knowing is really to speak to your provider. Some babies, they can start as soon as they turn six months. Other babies may begin a little bit sooner or even other babies can begin a little bit later, but you know, around six months is around the time that majority of babies can begin solids. So Carla has products that help mamas and papas to feel confident in this solid journey. Can you tell us a little bit about your offerings that can help some of the Veggie Magnifique viewers? Sure, I'd love to. <laughs> so I do have a baby led weaning course for those who specifically want to start their vegan journey. And parents who go through that course will master the signs of readiness. Like I mentioned, it goes a, a little bit more in detail about that. They'll master how to select a high chair to make sure that they start their journey safely, what plant foods to begin with and how to progress textures. They'll learn how to cut and prepare certain foods. And of course, knowing the nutrients and exact supplements to offer to their baby. And so it's a comprehensive course on starting solids during that first year for vegan babies so that parents can feel confident through the journey. What a wonderful resource. That is so exciting. <laughs> Definitely yes. check out Carla's class because if you're starting with your baby, oh my goodness, like what a what a wonderful resource because it can be so, so overwhelming. <laughs> you know? It can, yes. <laughs> it can. And we want to do like the best that we can as parents. <laughs> so exciting. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on Veggie Magnifique and sharing this really useful information. It's my pleasure and thank you again and for having me.